My name is Bryson Edward Howe and I am the director of a short documentary called The Earl of Pitt Street. The film is about a local entrepreneur, Mark Lagan. Mark bought a bar and restaurant that was formerly owned by a well-known crime family in the area he grew up in, in the west end of Newcastle upon Tyne, and turned it into one of the most successful businesses in the city. His story was one that instantly appealed to us and was something that was both very cinematic but also quite earnest. And it being a profile piece, Mark himself and his larger than life personality had a big impact on us wanting to make this film. This film was made as part of our introduction to factual module at university here in Newcastle, working in a small crew of four people. So for this project, I was acting as the director and producer. We had a cinematographer, Will, a sound designer, Lissa, and an editor, Savannah, with all of us chipping in wherever we could in pre-production and during the actual filming period, which was over two days. The first day we shot on location in the pub, the Earl of Pitt Street, uh, getting our interview with Mark and some B-roll of him working and of the location, and the second day to get some more B-roll footage of the city and surrounding area. I had met Mark about a year before we made the film through one of my tutors. Uh, he is known as a sort of local celebrity and over a few drinks we got chatting and he started telling me some of the stories from when he was younger in Newcastle. And I instantly sort of mentally noted that he would be a fascinating subject for a film or profile piece. So when the opportunity came about to make this film, I jumped on it. This wasn't my first film or documentary as a director, but it was my most ambitious in terms of really wanting this to feel a level above just another student film and of a higher quality than the films we had made previously. I'd worked with all the crew members on this film before as well, so we were all sort of on the same page in terms of the style and quality that we wanted to achieve going into this. And at points it seems maybe we have been a bit overly ambitious, especially working to such a tight deadline. We had about two weeks to make this film. So, for example, when in post-production we had realised that our two interviews' audio quality weren't exactly the same, uh, we had to try and sort of self-teach ourselves how to do a complete sound mix while working under this tight deadline, which was a big challenge. Um, and the reason we had to do two separate interviews was because of the nature of some of the stories Mark was telling us. We did a pre-interview as well. Uh, as some of the people they were about, we had to be completely sure that Mark was okay with uh, putting the, these stories into the film as we didn't want to cause any trouble for him or, or anyone that may have been involved. In the end though, we were very happy with what we ended up with and as a finished product, it was definitely the most polished and professional piece that we had made up to that point and we were looking forward to raising that bar for ourselves going forward. And most of all, when Mark finally brought himself to watch it, he was very happy with how it turned out, so that was a big relief for us. Thank you. I hope you enjoy The Earl of Pitt Street. <laughs> the area of the West End I grew up in was a rough place. There was a lot of kids who who I look back on, who could have and should have done well. But the belief and expectation in life was so low, was quite sad, really. Indeed, there's quite few lads who I knew, who were kids, who by the time they'd hit the mid-twenties who were already dead. The Earl of Pitt Street was owned by a family called the Sears, who were a well, well known Newcastle family. It had like a bit of a checkered background in that the people who had previously owned it had the place taken off them through the proceeds of crime. And I knew what of this pub, and then it had stood empty for about 10 years. So some people were a bit worried about me coming in here. <coughs> Let me say that the Greyhound and what it was is part of the West End's history. Cities always get bigger and the, the Greyhound as was is now becoming part of the city as the Earl of Pitt Street. And I love that I've got a place there's such a melting pot in the old neighbourhood where I grew up. And 
hopefully that's going to help the people who live in the area also from the point of view of their paying jobs and without so much threat and, and worry on the streets really. I, I actually stumbled into the restaurant business. I left school not having passed any exams and I was fortunate enough to actually get a start in a place which was actually regarded as a very posh restaurant. I realised probably that it was something I'd done well after a couple of years and then it eventually became my mission to actually do it on my own terms and have my own place. And indeed, it also meant you were more in control of your own life and existence. There's been several occasions down the years where I've seen, for instance, a raw young kid who, like myself, didn't pass any exams at school. And he'll start as a, a kitchen porter. And if you see somebody who's got the graft in them, in the application, you want to encourage them to step up and become a chef. It's an incredible struggle. It's a constant struggle, but you've got to be up for the battle. When you take a rough kid from the West End and give them a job and to put something in the area where I grew up, where nobody had any sort of like vision of like getting on in life, anything like that. They thought the cards were dealt, you know, and to say a kid becomes something under those circumstances, very rewarding. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.